so today we are going to work on that flare system I just previewed so let's see how to do that today and this episode is sponsored by these generous patrons thank you very much for your support okay so last time we worked on this particle effect for flares and today I am going to use this particle effect and implement the actual flares system that I can emit from fire from helicopter okay so how do we do that right so first of all I already have this missile And can already uh, it already have this move to function uh, no maybe we should implement it as a separate separate system because uh, they don't work quite as missiles especially like missiles go to some place and hit and explode but uh, flares are not like that so Let's implement an actor blueprint BP. Okay. Let me open it and under the default scene root, I'll attach the player effect. Should be here NS. Layer. I'm gonna have particle system. All right. Right now, uh, let's add a projectile movement component to this. So here as the initial speed, let's set max speed to five thousand. And as the initial speed, I'll set that's try thousand. And this is an instance of the. Is this just a material? Did I raise it one? Yeah, this is BP player, right? So if I simulate, you can see this is what happens. It moves for a while and falls down. So this has some. Rotation as well. Right, let me make it more rotate upward. Okay, so it moves and falls down. But if I change the gravity scale to 3, it will move further. Like this. See, it looks better but it falls through the floor so to prevent that I'll add the sphere it's too big uh, oh this I'll hide it it doesn't have to be visible but wait if I set the scale yeah, it would. I would have to use the same scale when I spawn that asset. So, yeah, I'll just hide it. Right now, no, it still falls through the ground because I didn't make this sphere the root. Now I made it the root by just dragging and dropping like this. I'll rename this uh, root here and drag and drop under the default scene root so now it won't fall through the floor see right now let's uh, this needs to have some randomization some some rotation it 
in the uh, when it moves so let's add a block uh, rotate and add the local rotation let me add z1 see what happens so now it has some change yeah that's better okay now we have our flare mm. let me remove it And let's open our helicopter. This one uh, should this one have players. This is just a passenger helicopter and this one have any flare emitting missiles or anything. So let's implement players here. First I need an input. Let's add a new function, new input event flare, and as the key, I'll use F. Open the attack helicopter blueprint. Implement flare action event. Should we call something like a chip flare? No, flare should be fine. So how do we? Let's go to our helicopter skeleton. Right, missile holder. Right, we have this missile joint. Here, I'll add a socket. R flare socket. Forward should be facing forward. Okay, and I'll move it here because this is the location where the players should be spawned right i'll set this to 10 so this is your for me to remember similarly i'll add another socket here what's this l missile joint missile also should face forward Ten. right okay save now I'll go here mm. now under the mesh I'll add a scene component this is to make it easier for us to adjust the location of where the flares is emitted inside this blueprint and also manage like rotation initial rotation of flares as well so 
this one r plus i'll call it r plus socket same name as the socket that i'm going to attach it And another scene component L flare socket. This must be attached to L flare socket. Okay. Now I think it would be better if both these flare sockets are facing a bit upward like this 20 right so now when I press F the helicopter should emit flares so get both references to both these flare sockets and I'll have a variable flare count this should be an integer by default it should be zero uh, altogether I am going to emit let's say six flares so here I'll add uh, to once node because player should not be able to like tap continuously flare button and emit an unlimited number of flares so we need to control that so that's why this do once node I will reset it after a while when the flares are gone so get set the player count to zero first let me collapse this so that this part is clean flares At the branch, if player count is less than six, from left side and right side, I will emit twelve players. If that is the case, let's just on. From class, get word transform of our player socket and get word transform of L player socket. Split this, split this. So as the class, I'm going to use BP Flare. So this is six means the max flare count. If you want, you can promote this to a variable and modify it. But for now, let's just keep it like this so spawn transform this one location is left rotation scale should be 111 try to adjust location but always spawn do the same here as well Try to adjust location, 
but always small and increment the player count then let's say like in a while delay 0.2 seconds try this again if this is false that means we have spawn our all the player account we have exceeded six so we can reset this to once not okay shall we check what happens well to make it test easily i'll move this up and process Save all and play. So if I press F, oh, wait, why aren't they moving? This is kind of pretty. Uh, is it colliding with something? Let me disable collisions of this let's set to more collision right in that case players uh, okay. This seems a bit smaller. So that's the case the conditions so what I can do is uh, initially I'll set collisions to no collision and let's say in a second delay in five seconds I'll set collision enabled to Korean physics so it will not go through the floor right and also they should be destroyed in a while so that means let's say a lifetime of a player should be Oh, we don't really need a delay. Oh yeah, we need a delay. Let's promote this as a life done. I'll set it to three seconds and deactivate this flare effect set lifespan to let's say another two seconds maybe four seconds just to see all the particles are destroyed before they just vanish
all right now i need to modify the direction of the players so what we can do is we can add or rotate no let's break this rotation Split this, split this. Roll. Well, let's connect it like this. Yo is same and pitch because the reason to add pitch is because here by changing pitch we can change the direction. So for the left flare we should add a positive change no negative change to pitch to make it turn away from the helicopter for the right player also the same right wait so pitch minus let's the flyer count let's multiply it actually we don't need to be this doesn't have to be minus this can be plus oh actually yeah this one is anyway zero but if we have an initial rotation in the pitch of the player or soccer transform this would matter so let's say three let's do the same yes yeah, well right now let's test well i don't really see any change where is that all right this is the problem so here i was actually rotating them in their local rotation so we have to actually rotate the flare socket itself so this part is redundant sorry about that let me revert those changes can get both L player socket and L player socket set local and relative rotation this for pitch let's multiply this minus 5 minus 3 connect <coughs> see now it has a fat We need to reset that when you are done. 
so here that means we have to we are only changing the y pitch which is zero mm -hmm. same for both So get them both set local relative rotation. rotation so let me come on this two variable and so cut rotation in the begin play let's save it set player socket rotation get one of them get the Q rotation now it should work right let's increase this uh, multiplier instead of minus 3 let's add minus 10 <coughs> okay so let's disable this uh, duct local rotation let me just disconnect this for a moment <coughs> why there is some difference because left side is moving up no right side is moving up left side is moving down there a problem in the socket rotation right ah yeah this is minus 20 okay so then the problem is We need two variables. And flares of rotation and R flares of rotation.
so we need to separately set both L initial rotation and R initial rotation disconnect this and connect here Now all seems fine. Okay, right. Now let's place this in the ground and let's see how they look when the helicopter is actually moving. Let me reduce the sound. this moment is speed a bit it would be better So I'm going to stop this episode right here. Oh, wait, actually, I need to check one more thing, which uh, uh, not really. Actually, what I want to show is this. So if you want to make the size of the player larger, what you can do is you can change this, uh, increase the scale of the sprite instead of 5, let's try 10 oh, they look much bigger so you can do that if I increase it further let's try 30 like that it will be a lot bigger this so actually that's not good so I think 10 by 10 is better for my test at least all right so I'm gonna stop this episode right here oh wait one more thing so why shouldn't I add some sound effect here This sound effect that should be cool. Uh, this flamethrower sound. So, does this have animation? Yeah, 
so um, you can attach it to the player itself audio So that's our final preview and as always project files will be available for the download in the patreon page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patreon club see you in another episode goodbye